So guys, now let us discuss the timer create API using which we usually create a timer. So now let us discuss some theory regarding timers creation. I want to cover as minimal theory as possible so that we can quickly see things in action while implementing our timers. We can quickly move towards hitting the keyboard and see things in action. So we will start with this API that is timer underscore create, right? You can see that this API accepts three arguments. The first argument is the type of timer that you are creating. Now Linux operating system or POS6 API allows you to create different types of timers. So I think that the discussions of different types of timers is actually not very valuable here. So I will show you the demonstration by implementing the real type of timers because there are other types of timers but those timers are not that extensively used and the type of timers which winds its applications in most scenarios or in most common deployments is the real timers. So as the first argument we need to pass a constant value which represents that what type of timer you want to create. The second parameters actually allows the developer or programmer to specify various parameters which controls the timers, right? We will shortly discuss in detail that what are those parameters and the third argument is a pointer to the timer, right? The API returns zero on success, otherwise it returns minus one on error and the global variable error number is set to represent what kind of error has occurred. Now this global variable is defined in file error number dot h and you can always print this number using percentage D format specifier, right? So in case the timer create returns minus one, you can see that what caused the error by printing this error number variable. Now let us discuss this controlling parameters of the timer. So this controlling parameters of the timer is represented by data structure sig event, right? Now within this data structures, there are three members whose value we need to specify. The first member is sig ev notify function. So it is the timer callback function pointer which we need to pass here. When the timer expires, it is this function which will be going to be invoked, right? And when this function will going to be invoked, then it also makes sense to pass some argument to this function. That argument is specified by second parameter of this data structure. That is sig environment value dot signal value pointer, right? And this member points to the address of the chunk of memory which will be passed as an argument to this timer callback function, right? So it is the application's responsibility to allocate memory and put any relevant data in that memory and initialize this particular member of this EVP data structures with that memory address, right? And the third SIGV notify member is always hard coded to this constant, right? SIGV underscore thread. By specifying this constant, we are actually asking the kernel to launch a timer thread to invoke the timer callback, right? There are actually other ways using which the kernel can invoke the callback function, not necessarily through the expiration of the timer, but also it can invoke in other ways. What are those other ways that is not important for discussion here because we are dealing with timers. Now coming to this callback function, what should be the prototype or signature of this callback function? There should be some prototype, right? So the prototype of this callback function is fixed and it should be this. That is the function should return nothing that is void. And the argument to this function is a data type union sig well, right? Now I understand that having hearing of these new data structures like union sig well or sig event is something that tends to create some uneasiness but note that these data structures are very simple to use. For example, in sig event data structures, all you need to do is to initialize these three members, 
right similarly for union sigval data structures all you need to do is to access this member that is si value pointer right so actually alg.sival pointer is the same address of this argument right because at the end of the day our goal was that to invoke the application specific callback function foo with the user defined data structures which is represented by this argument right so timer callback is actually a generic wrapper over application callback here foo is an application specific callback whereas timer underscore callback is a generic callback which has a predefined prototype and the argument which this timer callback function accepts is the actual argument which is passed to the callback function foo so here if you had passed here the address say 0x fde then arg dot saval ptr would store 0x fde right so now let us spend some more time in discussing the theory and then we will start implementation of our timers now the next thing that we need is a way to specify the expiration of the timer right that is after starting the timer how many seconds or nanoseconds we want our timer to expire or fire so for this the POSIX standards provide us the data structure i timer spec again a new data structures which probably you haven't heard of so this data structures is only used to specify the time if you see the definition of this data structure it again contains only two members the it interval and it value right these two it interval and it value members are again of data type time spec so now it's a time for us to see the definition of struct time spec data structure which is nothing but it is again a collection of two members the first member represents a time in seconds and the second member represents time in nanoseconds right POSIX standards provide us the facility to specify the expiration time of the timer in the granularity of nanoseconds so now let me discuss that how this i timer spec data structure is used to specify the expiration interval of the timer so if i just initialize this data structure ts as follows that is ts dot it value dot tv second is equal to 5 and ts dot it value dot tv nanosecond equal to 0 right it simply means that the expiration of our timer is set to 5 seconds that is after starting the timer our timer will fire after 5 seconds so this is what it value does setting the expiration timer setting the expiration time interval for the timer it interval we will going to discuss when we will actually implement the timer along the way right so let us defer the discussion of it interval so once we have specified the expiration time interval for the timer now the last step that is remaining is actually to arm the timer that is start the timer right for that we are given an api timer set time just pass the pointer to the timer that we have just configured pass the second argument as null pass the third argument as the address of this timer specifications and pass the last argument as null the argument which i say that pass it as zero or null needs no discussion because our goal is to understand how to implement the timer based programs or timer state machine also the arguments which we are skipping are actually optional arguments are and do not require a mandatory discussion in order to understand how timer works so now i know it's quite a boring and too much of a theory so let us put all pieces together and write our timer demo program right 